Hello and welcome to Chapter 11, Key Issue 3, where we're taking a look at where does industry cause pollution. Now, as we're getting started here, I just want to tell you that this is straight up from the textbook. This is These are not things that I personally believe. I'm just getting you the information from the text, if that makes any sense. Okay, so global scale air pollution. Rubenstein says that industry is the major polluter of air. And if we look at this picture right here, this could be steam, but maybe it's smoke from burning particles. That would make sense according to this picture and the information. As country per capita income increases, per capita carbon dioxide also increases, meaning the more stuff you got as a developed country, the more it seems that carbon dioxide increases. The world's richest countries have the highest pollution levels. Again, this is from the textbook, not from me personally. Global warming, or the greenhouse effect. The United Nations states that carbon dioxide is up 25% in the last 200 years. Global scale ozone damage. The stratosphere, this is the layer of our atmosphere that absorbs dangerous UV rays from the sun. It is threatened by chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs. Like back when I was a kid, which is a long time ago, um, they had this thing called Freon, what was the big damager of the, um, of the stratosphere, of the ozone layer. And so they made us get rid of all of our products that had Freon in it. Developed countries are supposed to stop using it by 2020. And I think for the United States, we have pretty much gotten rid of those. And developing countries are supposed to stop using it by 2030. The reason why they give developing countries more time is that it is cheaper to use things like chlorofluorocarbons and they don't want to damage their economy on their way towards being green. Regional and local scale air pollution. You've got things like acid rain happening. Acid rain comes from factories and it damages plants, kills animals, corrodes buildings and vehicles. These effects are not necessarily felt at the location, for example where these factories are. Maybe you don't really feel those damaging effects because it gets into the weather patterns and it's dropped maybe somewhere else because it travels with the weather. Um, some things that will create acid rain will be carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, and the particulate matters that are in the air after you're burning something. And you think about it, a lot of times we think about, well, it's a nice campfire or they're burning wood. But when it comes to industry, the things that they're burning are very toxic and dangerous because a lot of times you're burning plastics or fabrics which have lots of chemicals in them and when it's burned it creates lots of dangerous uh, things in the air. Solid waste pollution. Supposedly we're looking at four pounds of solid waste per person per day. That's a ton. That's a lot of waste. Where is that all going to go? 60% of it is from residences where people live and 40% is from business. If you think about it, everything we buy in the United States comes in a package. Even if it's just like a couple pens that you buy from the store, Think about the huge cardboard and plastic packaging that it comes in. That's a lot of waste. So we have what's called sanitary landfills. This is the most common form of disposal. You're looking at trucks dumping off their waste right here from around the city. That's an idea. But the problem is it becomes a shortage of space because you have huge cities and lots of people every single day using four pounds of waste. Where are you going to put all that? So one of the things they do is incinerate it or burn it, and that reduces the bulk. Um, and burning the trash can create energy, but one of the problems is the smell. And the other thing is possibly it getting into the air as it's being burned. Hazardous waste. These are byproducts of industry. Things like mercury, cadmium, zinc, cyanide, solvents, and acids. As industry is creating their products, they have a lot of dangerous and toxic byproducts. The EPA claims that 3.98 billion pounds of toxic chemicals are released into the air, um, I guess per year. I guess I didn't write that down and I apologize, but it's a whole bunch in 2010. EPA claims that mining is the largest polluter. So when you're mining, you're, you're getting rid of tons of toxic substances. Ohio, the state of Ohio, had 10 of the 100 largest polluting firms. They're doing a lot of mining in Ohio. And if you look over here, this is really interesting. If you're more towards the East Coast, there's going to be a lot more areas where they have toxic waste chemicals, where they're releasing it. If you move towards the West, it seems to be a lot less. But look at these huge depositories of all these toxic waste centers. Like, you really don't want to be in Southern Arizona over here or, or Northern uh, Nevada. Water pollution. You got two kinds. You got 
point source pollution where it's being polluted right there at the source. For example, for example, water manufacturers where you've got wastewater from food washing and manufacturing. If you're creating some process and you need to use water to wash out your product, all those chemicals and waste are going into the water and then you're depositing it somewhere. A lot of times it's right there around your plant. Uh, municipal sewage. More developed countries treat their water, but many less developed countries don't. They just have like their sewers with human waste going right into the water. And that's horribly dangerous and, and toxic. So that's, that's point source pollution where it's being polluted right there at the source. And then non-point source pollution. For example, if you've got a farmer that's laying down pesticides and fer fertilizers and herbicides on their grass, whenever it rains, that water is filtering out through the grass, picking up those particles, pesticides and her herbicides. <laughs> what am I trying to say? Fertilizers and herbicides. And it's going into the rake, <laughs> lakes, rivers, and streams. And it's the end of the day, so I can't talk. I'm sorry. And it destroys aquatic life. So it's not necessarily like they're dumping all these toxins into the river, but they are inadvertently putting it on grasses and, and crops and stuff. And in a non-source point pollution way, it's getting into the waters. The impact of water pollution of aquatic life. Your biochemical oxygen demand. Demand. This is the waste that uses all the oxygen. So if you've got a high demand on the oxygen in the waters because it's being used up by the toxins as, it's, as they're breaking down, then other forms of life are not going to be able to live there. Like you see this pelican over here. Obviously, he's covered in some kind of substance that's terrible. But even if it, the water appears clean and you have fish living there that have a biochemical oxygen demand, they need oxygen in the water, and you've got toxins in there that are breaking down and using the oxygen, the fish are going to die because they, they don't have the oxygen in the water. And then water that's heated, that also does damage to the life in the water because a lot of times you'll have manufacturing plants and they'll um, have exhaust ports or they'll have pipes running through the water to cool it down and that over time heats up all the waters. Fish can't live at a higher temperature and so they're going to die. And that's a look at chapter 11. Key issue three.